All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this lithium iron phosphate battery. And the brand name is here. And I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that. So we're just going to refer to this as the PUP battery. And I think that's going to be okay. But when you take a look at it, there is some um, information on the front of this battery. The first one is it's a 12.8 volt battery uh, rated for 100 amp hours. It says it's good for 5,000 charge cycles, has a built-in BMS, which is great. It says lighter weight, and this comes in at around 23 pounds, give or take. It says lithium iron phosphate in a temperature range, negative 20C to 65C. Um, that's a little bit lower than negative 20C than what we typically see as operating ranges on a lot of batteries. Most of the time they say don't uh, use these below freezing or zero degrees Celsius. Made in China, it has a CE uh, logo here, and it says don't throw in the trash. Um, warning, it says do not short circuit. Uh, the positive and negative terminals do not immerse or throw in water. Um, and do not disassemble or crush or modify the battery. I'm going to take a quick look at the top of this battery. Oof. And uh, it comes with a very nice nylon carrying handle that is removable here. You have uh, these protected uh, positive and negative terminals here and here. And they have these, I'm assuming it's like a brass um, bolt that goes in here. And these are an M8 threading uh, that goes on here. And they're a little bit short. So if you have to put a lot of uh, connectors on here, you may want to use a bridge or a bar, or you may want to get some longer ones. What it doesn't come with are any washers or lock washers. So you may want to add those yourself to ensure that your connection stays nice and tight. Also, on the back of this battery, there is some more stuff um, in terms of, let me zoom in on that a little bit, um, warnings and some high-level operating instructions. And I'll let you pause this and read that if that's something that you're interested in. Before we go any further in the video, I did want to say that uh, I was contacted by the manufacturer and they did send this battery to me free of charge in exchange for this video um, review. Everything that I say is going to be objective tests, so you have no need to worry. But if you're the type of person who gets upset at sponsored videos, perhaps you may want to go watch some cat videos. All right, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hook this thing up to a, um, to a load tester and we're going to do a capacity test, so stay tuned. All right, folks, so we're going to do the capacity test now, and we have the battery hooked up with this 10 gauge wire, both to the positive and the negative terminals. I'm going to move that over. We just tested the battery voltage and it's around 13.68. Now I had charged this battery up and uh, it, when I took it off the charger, it was around 14.4 and I let it sit for two days just for everything to settle down. For the test, we're going to use the West Mountain CBA uh, 4 anti um, battery analyzer. And uh, it's very simple. You just take your power pole connections and you hook it up right here. You plug that baby in and uh, this does get a little warm. So what we do is we put this on top of here to give us a little bit of extra stuff. And then we take our USB cable from our computer and we plug that in. Now let's take a look at the software and I'll show you the settings that we're going to use to test this battery. We're going to drain the battery at about 10 amps an hour. Being a 100 amp hour battery, we're looking at about a 10 hour test, provided everything goes correctly. All right, let me come back and show you the software. Okay, this is the configuration panel for the software, and it is a discharge test that we're doing. In the upper right hand corner, you can see that it has detected the battery type. I just go ahead and I can click the detect button here. And what we have is a lithium iron phosphate four uh, battery. Our voltage is 13.7. Rate of capacity we entered in is 100 amp hours. It has four cells. Now here in the center, we're setting our cutoff voltage to 10 volts. So it means that the software will automatically stop at 10 volts if the BMS doesn't. And uh, what we have here is our test amps are 10 amps per hour. And uh, then I'm just gonna hit the start button. And now you can see the test is running. Now, when you initially put a load on the test, the voltage drops a little bit. And you can see that at the beginning all the way over on the left-hand side of the software. Now, we'll come back periodically and check on this. But uh, at the end of the test, we should see what the overall capacity of this battery is. Stay tuned, folks. 
And the capacity test is complete. Let's take a little bit more of a detailed look and see what we can find. So when we run this test, it actually ran for almost 11 hours, just a few minutes shy, which is longer than I expected because the capacity was actually higher than the 100 amp hour rating. It was 109.579, which is about nine and a half percent higher than the advertised rated capacity, which is a good thing. The watt hours were 1395. And as I mentioned, the test ran for 657 minutes at a 10 amp draw. So what I wanted to highlight first was right around here, you see us hit the 12 and a half volt mark. And that was at 92.4 amp hours. Then we reached the 12 volt capacity or the 12 volt rating at um, 105 amp hours. And the, the test stopped running when the battery hit a voltage of 10, which was what we set it at. I wonder what the rated BMS cutoff voltage is. We'll have to consult the manual for that. Okay, the next test we're going to do is hook this up to an inverter and do a load test to see what uh, amperage we can get out of the battery continuously. But before we do that, I want to take a quick look at the Amazon advertisement and see if there's anything we can find out there. Okay, we're going to take a quick look at the Amazon page for this particular battery. Now, one thing is I don't know how to pronounce this word, so we're just going to call it the pup battery. But when you take a look at it, you can see the price is $279, uh, $30 delivery charge. It takes about a week to get to you. Okay, so here's the manual that shipped with my battery, and uh, I'm not going to spend too much time. We're actually not going to spend any time looking at this because I was also given a copy of the new manual that will be shipped with all the batteries moving forward. And instead of looking at something like this, I think it's probably more important to take a look at that. So let's do that now. Okay, so here is the new product manual. So let's just take a quick look at this. And uh, it is for the 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. Here is a table of contents and we're not gonna go through everything in this manual. But uh, what I did want to go through is some of the basic parameters of the battery. Here you can see electronic characteristics. The nominal voltage is 12.8 and the nominal capacity is 100 amp hours at 2C. So we did our discharge at 0.1C and uh, that's 10% of capacity. And that was 10 amp hours. And we actually got 109 and a little bit more uh, amps of capacity. Here it says the minimum capacity is 98 amp hours. Here it says the cycle life is greater than 4,000 cycles at 0.2% uh, charge discharge at 100% depth of discharge. End of life capacity would be 70%. So that means that your battery would be a 70 amp hour battery after the 4,000 plus cycles. And let's take a look. The charge voltage here they have listed at 14.4. And after we were done charging, that is exact voltage that we had. Um, the standard charge current, as I mentioned before, 0.2C, we charged at 0.1C using a NOCO Genius 10 battery charger. And I'm going to roll a picture of that in now so you can see how we charge the battery. Uh, maximum charge current is 0.5C or 50 amps. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, it's much better to use the recommended standard charge current. Here the peak current is 200 amps for three seconds. And when we did our load test, um, we were able to go above the 100 amp discharge at 125 for, for much longer than three seconds. Here the discharge cutoff voltage is 10 volts. Our test was set to cut off at 10 volts as well. There's some stuff down here around environmental conditions and some mechanical conditions. Here it talks about parallel connection. It says it can hold eight in parallel, um, which is impressive. And then the series connection would be four batteries in series. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these charts, but here is the um, typical discharge curve. And for 1C, that's this dark blue line here. And we tracked pretty close to that. Now here it says the temperature for this test was at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. We were probably closer to 68. But uh, we did exceed that capacity just a little bit, and we had a little bit better metrics than that. So it's good to see that our, our, our discharge curve was consistent uh, with that. And then the rest of this document talks about things to do if something is not working correctly, uh, goes through some operating instructions, some battery maintenance things that you should pay attention to, some precautions and th warnings that you should be aware of. And down at the bottom, I did want to talk a little bit about 
here, they had some more information about batteries in series and parallel, and you can see that here. Um, they say to use identical batteries with the same capacity, and that's very important, and same BMS, for example, uh, from the same brand. That's really going to cover it for the manual. Okay, so we have the pup battery connected via these heavier gauge cables to our GoWise power inverter. It's a 1500 watt inverter. We have a Kai Wheats HT28D, and that is clamped onto the positive terminal so we can measure the amperage coming out of the battery. We're powered up, and you can see at idle, we teeter between zero and one amp draw to power the inverter. The inverter comes out and goes into the Kumin watt meter, so we're going to be able to see how many watts are coming out of the inverter. And then I have the EEV blog multimeter uh, monitoring the voltage of the battery. And then for the load test, we're going to use everybody's favorite, the heat gun from Harbor Freight. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this on low and see what we get. So you can see a little bit of a drop in the voltage, which is to be expected on the EEV blog multimeter. And we're pulling about 58 amps out of the battery right now, which is resulting in 613 watts. Let's go ahead and turn it up to high. And now we're pulling around 120 amps, which is higher than the rated capacity for the battery. We are at 1230 watts and the battery voltage is hanging around 12.1 something and it is dropping okay let's get a different device to use as a load i'll be right back okay we have a space heater set up to the watt meter. And one of the things I want to say real quick is, is that I don't recommend that you run these batteries over the recommended discharge capacity. We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this on. And as you can see, it is very low in terms of draw and wattage. And that's because this is really operating as a fan right now. Let's go ahead and turn the heat on and uh, see what we get. Okay, now we're starting to draw a little bit of power out of this thing. Here you can see the voltage if you want to keep an eye on that. And we're pulling around 700, and, oh, it's continuing to climb. If I go much higher than 125 amps, the inverter is actually going to kick out. Let's see what happens now. And it doesn't look like we're going to pull more than 80 amps out of the battery. And I think this is going to conclude our draw test. We've been able to show that it can handle 100 amps of current for continuous discharge. Okay, so the pup battery does every single thing that it was advertised to do. Uh, so I feel pretty good about it. Uh, I did want to say that uh, I was pleased with the testing and the testing results. And that I wanted to be thankful to Pup for sending this battery to me for my consideration. I also wanted to say thank you to everybody for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again, everyone.